All right, on the bench today, it's been a while since I actually uh, worked on one of these. Out of a 2006 Ford Freestar with a 4.2, we have the AX4N or the 4F50N. And I don't know the mileage because it was not written down. Um, we did a code scan, but I think we saved it into the scanner, so I can't even tell you what codes are present either. Um, I can tell you what it's doing though, and it doesn't seem like it was shifting out of first gear. All right, so on these AX4Ns, 4F50Ns, AX4S, second clutch stays on. It, second clutch of course comes on on the one two shift and stays on for third and fourth okay also like the 4t65e second clutch stays on for third and fourth the 4t60e so what that means is without second you're not going to have third or fourth all right so this I, I drove the car before we brought it in because the manager actually drove it and we sold the job and got the okay but i just kind of wanted to drive to get the feel for it and didn't seem like it was coming out of first or maybe making a real crappy one two shift so, I mean, I'm thinking we may find something wrong uh, with the intermediate clutch or maybe the intermediate clutch piston, you know, something to that effect. Maybe once we get this thing out, we'll air check it and see what happens. But um, it didn't shift out of first, so I don't know if we're, we're going to be looking at foul body. Not, not really sure. The fluid's really not burnt, burnt, you know, like it, I, I don't think it really like smelled burnt, but... These are molded pistons in here, so uh, really just got to wait and see, you know, what we find when we open it. So we're going to do some today, get the back cover off, maybe we'll get the, um, uh, maybe the channel plate down with all the springs and the accumulators and stuff, and then uh, maybe we'll finish up the rest uh, tomorrow morning. But I'm not going to have a lot of time tomorrow morning to tear the whole thing down, so we're going to do some tonight and some tomorrow. All right, so again, 06 Freestar, uh, 4F50N, no shift out of first. All right, let's just take a, I'll get a little closer up. We'll take a look around the transmission and then we'll start um, tearing this thing down. All right, so let me get a little closer. I'll be right back. All right, so let's take a look real quick. On top here, you have your vehicle speed sensor or maybe your output speed sensor, if you call it, all right? This usually clamps on to the, to the um, filler tube right here. All right, so we're gonna take this out of the wire here, and we're gonna take this off first, get this out of the way. Uh, a lot of times you have no speedometer, check this and make sure it's plugged in or it could be bad. And right here is your input speed sensor, reading the sprockets. Um, manual lever position sensor or MLPS or, or digital range switch. Okay, and here is here is the vent on this transmission. So what do we do, because sometimes you fill this thing up and the oil comes spewing back out of the filler tube. So what we usually do is we take the vent off while we're filling it so the transmission can breathe. Because sometimes, you know, when you're flipping it around on the bench, all right, so it's kind of on like that. You're flipping it around, you can push it down and, and pretty much block it. So I take these things off here, and I really and I'm going to give it to the installer and leave it off until uh, this transmission is full. But you can get right in there and pop that back on right on top. Okay. Also, these fittings here, one here, one here, um, they always get changed. These are the large known, uh, known as the large fittings. So I'm going to take screw this one out, throw it away. This one's already out. Maybe he had trouble getting it out of the line, so he just took the fitting out. Okay, so both of those fittings are going to get replaced. All right, so I guess we can start taking this thing apart. We're going to take the switch off first. Let me just reposition the camera. Take the switch off. We're going to take the input speed sensor out. We're going to take the overdrive servo out for the overdrive band. And we're going to take the filler tube out and the speed sensor out. Get everything out uh, from the external of the transmission first, and then we'll take the cover down, valve body, 
and we'll see how far we can get with this. All right, I have uh, you know, probably about half an hour or so. All right, so let me reposition and we will start. All right, so let's go ahead and get this cover off with the overdrive piston. All right, those were three eight millimeter bolts. That should come right out. Give it a couple of attempts. The fluid doesn't, doesn't really look that bad. It smells a little burnt, but it's not that bad. All right, so here is your return spring. And here is, uh, I call it like a hockey puck. So I just bang it out from here and change over and bang the new one on and change over the piston. All right, so this, you know, I get a bam kit, so all the pistons are changed. Okay. All right, so here is this. So next, let's get the filler tube out. And the other half is, you know, over there underneath the car. So this will pull right out. Put this back in here. Alright, so now vehicle speed sensor. Alright, so we have the cover. Take the cover off. And then here is the speed sensor. Lift it right out. That's what that looks like. Had to change a few of those, you know. Go bad. I did knock the right side axle seal out just to save a little time. Okay, now we're going to go with the rain switch on top. I've seen these things do some crazy stuff. Okay, all right, so this came right off. I think one time we had one that I think maybe the radio or something crazy wasn't working. And these things give so many problems. I, what I did, because I really didn't know what else to do, was I unplugged the rain switch and it started working. Unless it was back feeding or something like that, but I'll never forget it. And I says, wow, put a new one on it and fix it. Something really, really way out in left field that you would never think of. But these things give so many problems, and it's, you know, with these Fords. All right, here's the input speed sensor. This is the later one. There are a few different ones of these. Um, that, yeah, it was crazy. Okay. All right, so now we got one, two, three, four, five T30 and two 10 millimeter bolts. And the bell housing that we're going to take out first. All right, now we're going to get the T30s out. behind this cover. Be careful with these bolts. I torque them down. You got 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter. Strip out very, very easy. I always stock up on my uh, six by one helicoil inserts and the other ones are eight by one to five, which I think I have plenty of those. But usually the ones down here like the eight millimeters, um, there's a few of them, one, two, three. I think there's one more, four and the rest are tens. So these bolts I kind of keep aside. So let's get those out. I'm going to get a smaller extension. All right, so I'm going to take the eight millimeters out first. Tens. I'm 
get the cover down. There's going to be an O-ring as a gasket on this aluminum cover. So there's one more. Let me just take these out. And then there is one more. shift solenoid. I think this looks a little burnt up. But we're gonna be changing the solenoids. You know what? Almost looks like there is there's water in here. Got a bunch of rust on the CPC solenoid, bunch of rust here. Yes, evidence of water in this transmission. That's probably what we're dealing with. So everything is going to be changed, but everything is going to, would be changed anyway. There's even a rust on here. And this is solenoid, very expensive, over a hundred bucks. So, all right, probably your whole ordeal is we're dealing with water in this thing. Which means, may need a radiator. I'll have to call this guy tomorrow. Okay, so here's the harness, which will stay in the channel slate. And this one, on these AX4 Rans and 4 at 50 inch, it just gets rounded over the manual valve. And on the AX4 Rested S's, there's actually a um, piece just snap into the separator plate. And I believe it gets rounded a different way. So just kind of look and see how the harnesses are rounded. All right, which also means this, uh, these gaskets are going to be caked on here with water. This water, so I'm gonna have to soak these things for a while in my hot tank to get them out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, long bolts here, which hold the valve body on, and then two short ones, and take the cover off. And that's the pump. All right, so these are the long bolts. Get the shorties out. Okay, take the cover off, and there is your pump. Alright, let's get the veins out. Pump rotor. Alright, and the other guide. Alright, so this rotor, there's a step here. And that rotor goes in with the step facing out. All right, so next we're going to take uh, the eight millimeters out. A uh, few of them got to stay in because they actually hold the two halves together. But we're going to take the whole thing out as one shot. And holding, holding the valve on to the case, you pretty much just have two different size bolt so that's pretty you know easy to figure out there. I think you got three of them in there that stay So actually, this one should have stayed in. So that's one that that holds the that holds it together. So let's put that back in. Let's take that one out. All right. So we got one, two, three. 
All right, so this valve body should come out. Take it out of the manual valve. And you can see the gasket's all, uh, you know, kind of cracked up because there was water in there, but I'm going to soak these things, uh, you know, in the tank. So for a while, probably all day tomorrow, and then it'll just peel right off. Okay, so this linkage right here, that'll come right out. Okay, here is your pump shaft. You got two seals here, two seals here. And uh, there's actually a way to check this pump shaft. You blow through these holes, you blow through, you block this hole, blow here, and it should only come out here. Here. Whoops, sorry. All right, so let's start over. Okay, so you're gonna blow through this hole with compressed air. All right, so you have your finger on the other side. You blow through this hole here, and it should only come out this hole and this hole, not up here. If it comes out up here, then the pump shaft is no good. All right, and then you can blow air into the end of this here, and it should come out here and here, not here and not here. All right, so that's how you can check the pump shaft. So you blow air into the end here, it'll come out on the bottom and on the top. But the middle hole here, middle holes here, no air should come out. Here are the pump, pump ring is and the seal for the pump slide. Okay. And we've got some rust here, got rust here. So definite, definite evidence of water. All right. So now we've got some different bolts here. We've got an eight millimeter we're gonna take out. And then we're going to get out all the tens around the outside. And there's usually a linkage. This was missing, but linkage bolt normally is there. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Okay, so all the... Oh, now, all the tens are out from around and inside the bell housing, which holds this cover. So we got two here that go into the center support, and then another one here that goes into the center support, and then the cover we can get off. So let's get these out. Okay, that's what they look like. And then there's a 13 millimeter. And there's my 13. All right, then we gotta be careful because there's one, two, three, four springs. And we wanna try to look where everything goes. Okay. All right, let me just bring this down a little. I don't know if I'm going to be blocking you guys. I apologize if I am, but I need to, to kind of keep the springs where they belong. Okay, so let's make sure we got everything out. Oh, one more. One more. Okay. Kind of was hitting a little solid. That's why I wanted to check. Got a dowel here, and okay, there's also a dowel on the inside. Okay. All right, so it's actually stuck on the dowel here. here. Alright, so I'm going to get Okay. Alright. 
this out. Now I'm going to kind of just hold these springs in place. All right, they fell out, but I got them. Let's see where they go. Just make sure you guys uh, can see this okay. Yes, okay. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna take these out. This piston here. All right, this has a spring on it. Here is the piston. Uh, what it's like, the piston rod. Okay, so that is number one. seal. Number two, I just line them up how they come out. Number three, and yeah, this. Number four. Okay. So we got these. All right, we got a washer here. sure we got no ring roof here from that. All right, we got another washer here. Okay. And this gasket, of course, gets, this stuff gets here. Yeah, this is old water. This stuff gets caked on here. It takes a real long time. It gets real pain to get this off. All right, so here's the thermal element. And I'm going to take this out so I don't lose it when I wash this up in the tank. Back. Even with Hondas, half the battle, half the battle is, is getting these gaskets off. So it's all, you can see it's all, you know, I got to get some new razor blades and I'll chop what I can, wash it up when it's real hot, again. So. Chain feels okay. So now we're going to go ahead and pull the out. And so I just pop it out. Okay. And this is what your input speed sensor reads, so you want to be careful that these tabs, you know, stay good. They don't get bent or anything. All right. Another washer. Another washer here. So now we have the center support, and what I'm going to do is take a screwdriver and kind of pry over on the linkage and see if we can't pop this thing out. Uh, I can get it down to the center support, but then I'll have to uh, take the pan down and get the tubes and stuff out and get the center support anchor bolt out and then the rest will come out, but let's see if we can do this here. Okay. Bang it 
out. Okay, and there's the overdrive van, which is going to be changed. Now this whole thing, well, let's see if we can get this out. We'll get this out here. And right here is the sprig of the washer. Okay, there is a six slotted bushing in here. And you want to make sure that this is good. Okay, so if there's a lot of play, I, I usually change those. You gotta make sure you line everything up right. Alright, here's your sprig. That's good, that'll actually come out. So we can wash this drum up, change the bushing. Got some rust here. All right, and then when we put this back, we're gonna check the rotation. Okay. I'm gonna pull the drum set out. All right, so here's the second drum. Looks like there's a lot of clearance in that drum. Let's put this back here and then let's take a look at it. You know, when you get water in there, those clutches tend to wear out, flake off. Let's see what happened. Well, not much, they're a little... A little burnt. I think the pack would be tighter, and I'm sure they're worn out. Okay. But water is definitely the problem here, 100%. This back. These signs sometimes break. Let's just see for the heck of it how this drum air checks. As usually, once there's water in there or evidence of water in there, it's a problem. Not too bad. All right, so let's get this. Then we have a washer here with a plastic one inside it. It's going to go here. It's going to go there. Okay, and the air check through here. You know, it could also be a solenoid problem from the water getting in there, but, you know, water is bad news. Two, two worst things for a transmission is water and heat. Right, that's uh, not it. That's not it. All right, so this is, it's not even air checking. The second clutch isn't even air checking. And the other two are. third and forward and second's not even air checking. So Okay, but there is the check ball that's right here. So you got to be careful because you got to get two screwdrivers in here and pry up, and you don't want to pry up on that check ball. So you got to look for it, and I put it right here in front of me. All right, so let's get this out. All right, I get two screwdrivers, same time. 
go. Oh, we're drawing this here. Okay. All right, so we'll take a look at those. All right, here is the third sprig. Okay. And you got, when you put the forward drum on, uh, you got a couple of O-rings here. You gotta be careful not to cut them. All right, be very careful. And then you wanna check in here. There's a bushing in here, and you wanna check in here. And it's nice and smooth in there. Okay, so this fell. All right, so what I'm gonna do is put you guys on hold, and I'm gonna open up this second drum. We're gonna take a look at the piston, because uh, it seems that the piston is probably no good. All right, so I figured it was something with the piston or with the clutches. Um, but once you see the water, you know, it, uh, I actually didn't know that until I, I even drained this unit, but it's so freaking busy here. I flip it upside down and I got to run off somewhere for 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, give me five minutes. I'll be right back. Let's take a look at this. All right. So I got the snap ring off. So let's take a look at this. All right. Here's the balance piston, but, uh, you know, that's not the problem. Here's your return spring. Now let's see if we can get this piston out. In there pretty tight. is your no shift debonded piston all right that was that's blown right by now there is your no shift you know water could have got in there and peeled this thing off but basically it's a debonded piston causing the problem okay and then we have our o-ring here uh. Back in the day when these were aluminum pistons, this would be a lip seal. All right, but it's a, a different piston, so it's a D ring. All right, so there is our problem. All right, let's take a look real quick at the rec clutch. They're normally pretty good. All right here also is another washer that goes on the return springs in between. I'm getting a banner kit for this anyway, but they look okay. Alright. Look at the forward clutches. Burnt up, flaked off. Not much left on this one. Sometimes they have a wave steel, sometimes they don't. This one does not. Okay, all right, so, hey, we found our problem. All right, so let's get, uh, let me pick this up a little bit. Okay, so we'll go down to the center support. All right, so here's the hub for the second clutch. You got a bearing here and a bearing here. Here's the shell, drive shell. Okay, there's a bearing inside the planet so we want to make sure in here is smooth. All right, so there is the center support. So what we'll do, you know what we'll do? I have a few minutes. I'm going to drop the pan, take the filter out, and then I got to stop there, and I got to go. <sighs> okay. So these are all eight millimeter. They do like to strip out when you're going back together with them. Sometimes what I do is I take my torque wrench and go around all of them and just check them. It doesn't really mean anything because when you're going back together, they can strip out anyway.
seal so you can see that green seal there's like three different filters so the real late ones take the green seal okay all right so what we're gonna do tomorrow we're gonna take the tubes out they're all gonna get new o-rings we're gonna take these brackets out first get the tubes out we're gonna get this accumulator out here is the center support anchor bolt also, this tube goes into the center support for reverse. We're going to take this uh, molded piston out. That's going to be changed because there was water in it. And then we can slide the rest of the uh, gear train out. All right, so I'm going to stop there because I do have to go. And I'll catch up with you guys in the morning. We'll finish up the teardown. All right, back with you this morning. Uh, so I'm going to get the brackets off. That hold these tubes in. Okay. Now I'm going to get the tubes out. So we got an O-ring here, and then the seal is in the center support for that side. center support and that is three quarter and we got a metric allen key size looks so like it's six I'm going to take the bracket off here for the linkage Accumulator here. I believe that is the neutral drive accumulator. And your 
bolt goes through here like that. All right. See if we can get this sapling is a little tough to get out. We'll see if we can just get that molded piston out there for the band. And then we can just pull the rest of the gear train out. That's pretty much it. Okay, let me just find something here. All right, so let me see if I can move this snap ring, real heavy snap ring. Get behind it. there but clean her up okay so, turn this now this way okay I got the set of support planet set out right, so we'll take a look at these this is reverse Give me two minutes here. When I took that server out, some oil splashed on the floor. I just want to clean it so I don't step in it. Give me two seconds, please. I'll be right back. Okay. So inside the case, now we're going to take out the low intermediate clutch pack. All right. On like, for instance, an AX4S, that would be a band. But on the AX4N, 4F50, clutch pack. So that is low intermediate. All right, now you got to get the snap ring out. And then we can slide the rest of the gear train out. Get the set of support out, which houses the piston, the sun gear, and the diff, and the case pretty much is stripped. All right, so that snap ring is another heavy one. So what I do is I got a really thin screwdriver, I uh, 
stick it in uh, uh, behind it and turn it just to get it away from the side of the case, then I can get in there with this. So, when I pull snap rings out that are beveled, most of the, almost every time, the bevel would face up. As I always say, the bevel faces up. This one, the bevel faces down. Okay, so now, let me slip this out. Okay, here is the bearing. All the way in the back, it's actually two pieces. Okay, this goes on the case, this goes on the diff. And there is a spacer here that goes under the center support and then the ring here. Spacer, so this will come off, and the spacer actually sits there. Okay, here is the ring gear for the final drive. Sun gear, you got a bearing here, the race is here, and your low intermediate piston. This bearing goes here. So the case is stripped. Let me get rid of it. And we can take a look at the planet set, uh, a couple of the clutch packs, and that's about it. Here is the, the bearing in here that rides in here. So that looks good. There is a bushing in here. And on some of the models, on early ones, there's a bearing in here that sometimes pits, pits up the shaft. So you knock the bearing out and, and there's a replacement bushing. So I smooth this out and put a replacement bushing in and you don't have to change the output shift. Okay. It's good. Okay, this is reverse. There's no, uh, there's no chamfer to get this piston in. This is not a molded piston. So you need a tool. Two, three, four, there's five of these. A lot of times there's four of them. So you need a tool to get this uh, piston in. You know, there's no chamfer at all. Okay. 
So on this center support here, here are the two seals that I changed for the feed tubes. And I think that's about it. I think that's about it for this. Uh, we've got an 06 Ford Freestar here with 42 4 f 50 n complaint of wooden shift out of first, and we found this piston became debonded. All right, and just total oil pressure just blown right by. It wasn't shifting at all. So, typical banner kit. Uh, we're gonna do all the electronics because there was evidence of water in here. Now, body. All right, so we got a sleeve here. Make sure there's no ring grooves. That looks okay. And what we're going to do is take the three bolts out and lift the pump. We'll lift off the pump. See all the uh, all the rust here. These gaskets get like baked on. Now the bad news is this one's on the valve body, so I got to get a sharp razor blade and just you know the only thing I can do is scrape this one off. But 100% evidence of water. These I'll soak in the tank. Actually, I'll probably take this over and work on that in a little while. So I want to get this torn down now. I got a. 4L60E. I gotta finish up on the other bench. Uh, BMW shop had brought me the front half of a ZF6HP26 for bushings, and they would like that this morning so I can get the car off the lift, get it back in, and then I will work on this. Plus, we gotta call the owner of the car and let him know we need a radiator. Okay. Also, just on the planets, there's a bearing here. So we gotta tell him we gotta do a radiator in this thing. This thing definitely has evidence of water. Alright, so that is all for now. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you next one.